Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is Pareto efficiency. Let's start off by looking at a couple of games. This is a version of Battle of the Sexes. There are two pure strategy Nash equilibria, ballet, ballet, and fight, fight. I want you to take a look at those two equilibria and decide which of the two is more efficient, ballet, ballet, or fight, fight. If you need to, pause the video now. But if you have an answer, in the comment section below the video, go ahead and write which one you think is more efficient, ballet, ballet, or fight, fight. Don't submit it quite yet, though, because we have one other question ahead of us, and if you're ready for it, let's take a look at that. This is another version of Battle of the Sexes. There are still two pure strategy Nash equilibria, ballet, ballet, and fight, fight. I want you to look at this game and decide which of the two equilibria you think is more efficient, ballet, ballet, or fight, fight. If you need to, go ahead and pause, but if you know your answer, type it out in the comment section, maybe give a brief explanation as to why you picked one of the two options in each of these games, and then go ahead and submit that comment. And if you're ready, I will reveal the answer now. It was a trick question. These games are identical. Why are these games identical? Well, if you remember back to the last lecture, when we looked at positive affine transformations, we found that expected utility representations of preferences are identical across an affine transformation, a positive affine transformation, where we take the original utilities, multiply them by some number alpha or a greater than zero, and then add any other number b to each of those utilities. And that's exactly what I did between those two versions of Battle of the Sexes. So if we were looking at this original game right here, I'm guessing that you probably said fight fight was the more efficient of the two equilibria. And your justification was that if you add the utilities for both players, 100 plus one, that's 101, and that's substantially larger than the utilities for ballet ballet. That's one and a two, that's only three. So fight fight appears to be more efficient in this case. But when you get to this other game, well, now Ballet Ballet may appear slightly more efficient if you use the same logic as before. Adding up those utilities gets you 2.01, whereas Fight Fight gives you 2. So maybe it's a little bit closer under these circumstances, but by that same metric, Ballet Ballet appears to be the more efficient of the two. Yet, if we look very closely at what was going on here, it was a positive affine transformation. Back to the original game right here. Take a look at player one's payoffs. We have zeros, one, and 100. If we take all of those payoffs and divide them by 100, just for player one, that's a positive affine transformation. And that leaves us with the game that you see here. This is the second game, where now the zeros remain zeros, the one turns into a 0 .01, and the 100 turns into a one. So this is the same game. It represents the same preferences for player one. So whatever we thought about efficiency for the first game, we really should be thinking about efficiency for the second game as well. What this is revealing is a problem with something known as interpersonal utility comparisons. Because utilities represent preferences identically across positive affine transformations, we cannot compare utility quantities, the exact numbers that we're using, between players. That's because we could always take a single player's payoff and multiply it by some arbitrarily large number, or equivalently add a very, very large number to it, and suddenly that player's utility is going to appear to be larger, even though we're still representing the same exact preferences. Nevertheless, we have some sort of sense of utility in game theoretical models that we've looked at before. For example, let's look at the prisoner's dilemma. This was the very first game we ever looked at, and we saw that there was a clear inefficiency going on here. We know that the equilibrium of the game is mutual defection, so both players get a payoff of two. And that was disconcerting because there's this alternative outcome, cooperate, cooperate, that leaves both parties better off. Both players could receive a payoff of three for cooperate, cooperate, whereas they only receive a payoff of two for defect, defect. We've also seen other similar sorts of inefficiency. This isn't a stag hunt. Stag hunt had two pure strategy Nash equilibria, stag, stag, and hare, hare. And the stag, stag outcome seemed to be more efficient in some way than the hare, hare outcome. Again, both parties were better off with the stag, stag outcome than the hare, hare outcome. 
if we tweak these payoffs just slightly, we make player two's payoff for hair hair three instead of one, there's still a similar sense of inefficiency going on here with the hair hair outcome. Yes, if we compare stag stag to hair hair, player two is getting the same payoff, but player one could be made better off by switching to stag stag than leaving it as hair hair. And that's where this notion of Pareto efficiency comes into play. What we can do is take the general idea from the last three games and the three uses of efficiency in those contexts and formalize it into something known as Pareto efficiency. So we say an outcome is Pareto efficient if there is no other outcome that makes at least one person better off without leaving anyone worse off. And similarly, we say an outcome is Pareto inefficient if there is another outcome that leaves at least one person better off without making anyone worse off. Let's see that in action with some of the games that we've been looking at earlier. This is our good friend, the Stag Hunt. We have a single outcome in the Stag Hunt that is Pareto efficient. That's the Stag Stag outcome. Under this outcome, both players receive a payoff of three. That's each player's largest payoff for the game. So we can't switch to any of the other outcomes, stag hair, hair stag, or hair hair, and make at least one party better off without making anyone worse off. Any switch is going to make both parties worse off, in fact. So stag stag is the only Pareto efficient outcome in this game. And it just so happens to be an equilibrium too, which is nice. There can be games with multiple outcomes that are Pareto efficient. The Prisoner's Dilemma is one of them, and this is actually somewhat disconcerting. There's only a single outcome that is Pareto inefficient in The Prisoner's Dilemma, and that is the unique equilibrium of The Prisoner's Dilemma, defect defect. This is Pareto efficient, again, because we could switch to cooperate cooperate, and that would leave at least one party better off, in fact it will leave both parties better off, and it's not going to make anyone worse off. But the two other outcomes, cooperate defect and defect cooperate, are also Pareto efficient. The logic is the same for both of them, so let's only look at the defect cooperate outcome in the bottom left. Why is this Pareto efficient? Well, notice that player one receives a payoff of four for the defect cooperate outcome. That's his best outcome. He can't do better, and in fact, switching to any other outcome makes him strictly worse off. He could get a three, he could get a one, he could get a two. Any way of those, or any value that he's getting other than the four is going to be worse than the four that he gets by defecting. So you can't look at any other outcome and make at least one party better off without making anyone worse off. Player two is going to be made better off by switching that one to something larger, but because player one is going to be made worse off, we say that the defect cooperate outcome is Pareto efficient. And likewise, the cooperate defect outcome is Pareto efficient. So the three efficient outcomes of the game are the three outcomes that don't occur with positive probability and equilibrium. It's just the defect defect outcome, the only one that's Pareto inefficient that occurs in equilibrium. One last game to look at, and this is going to refresh and reinforce the point about indifference in Pareto efficiency. So this is a modified version of the stag hunt, where player two is getting a payoff of three for the hair hair outcome. In the hair hair outcome, despite the fact that player two is getting a payoff of three, that outcome is still going to be Pareto inefficient. That's because we can switch to the stag stag outcome. Yes, player two receives the same payoff, so she is not being made any better off, but she's not being made any worse off, whereas player one is being made better off by switching that one, that small payoff, to that larger payoff of three. So hair hair here is Pareto inefficient, and we're now utilizing the indifference condition in Pareto efficiency. As long as one party is better off and no one is worse off, then we have one outcome being Pareto efficient or Pareto dominant compared to a different outcome. That wraps up this lecture on Pareto efficiency. The key takeaway here again is that we can't make these interpersonal comparisons of utilities. Instead, all we can really do is look at outcomes and compare outcomes to check to see whether we can enhance welfare for both players or at least one player without making anyone worse off. I hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you next time. Take care.